Blood is something that we've all seen, and you probably know that it contains red blood cells. But did you know that it actually has four main components? Today, we're going to look at each component and what it does. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmatheteachy.com. The blood is part of the human circulatory system, along with the blood vessels and the heart. You'll learn more about these in separate videos. There are four components of the blood. You need to know what each part does and what it looks like. It may surprise you that over half of your blood isn't actually made of cells. It's made of plasma. Plasma is a pale, straw yellow coloured liquid. Its function is to transport your blood cells around the body, along with some other chemicals such as carbon dioxide, urea and proteins. Then we've got red blood cells. These have the important function of carrying oxygen around the body, bringing it to the cells that need it. To do this, they have some special adaptations. First up, they've got a pigment called hemoglobin. This can bind strongly to oxygen, which helps them hold on to it and carry it around the body. It's also what makes the red blood cells red. Secondly, they have no nucleus. This allows more space for the hemoglobin pigment. And thirdly, they're biconcave, which means they have a dip on each side. This increases their surface area to volume ratio so they can carry more oxygen. Red blood cells make up around 45% of the blood, and the remaining less than 1% are white blood cells and platelets. White blood cells are covered in the infection and response topic. You'll go over them in a lot more detail then. So for now, we'll just cover their main function, which is to protect the body against infection. Unlike red blood cells, they do have a nucleus, and they're normally larger. They're also not as strongly pigmented, so if you're asked to identify them in a photograph, they'll just be the colour of whatever stain has been used. Finally, we've got platelets. These are fragments of cells and their function is to help the blood clot. This is important when a person gets wounded as it helps prevent blood loss and forms a scab that prevents bacteria from entering the body. As they're fragments of cells, they're quite a lot smaller than red or white blood cells. So this is how you can identify them. Okay, it's time to try the quick questions. I recommend grabbing some paper and a pen to give these a go. And when you're done, just press play and we'll mark the answers together. Ready? Okay, number one, match the component to its function. We've got a red blood cell here and its function is to deliver oxygen to the cells of the body. The second one is a platelet as it's really small and its function is to help the blood clot. And then we're left with the white blood cell whose function is to protect against infection. Two, identify how many red blood cells there are here. Okay, so we just need to spot them in the diagram below and let's cross them off as we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There you go. And B, calculate how many red blood cells there would be in 100 millimeters squared. In higher tier, give your answer in standard form. Okay, so we are looking for 100 millimeters squared. And at the minute, our dimensions are 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 millimeters. So let's work out what that is as an area. So we're just going to multiply the numbers together. And that gives us 0 0.25 millimeters squared. So what we need to do now is work out how many times bigger the 100 millimeters squared area is. So to do that, we're going to take the 100 millimeters squared and divide it by the area that we've got, which is 0 0.25. When we divide it, we get 400. So it's 400 times bigger. So now all we're going to do is multiply 400 by the original 13. And there's our answer. Now, remember, for higher tier, we've got to give that answer in standard form. So we need to figure out a number that's between 1 and 10. So let's place our decimal in here to give us 5.2 and then we count 1, 2, 3. That's how many places the decimal has moved from its original place. 
So our final answer is 5.2 times 10 to the power of 3. If you're really struggling with that, make sure you check out my maths and biology video as I cover standard form and lots of other math skills that you need for your GCSE biology exam. Moving on then, number three, clotting factors help platelets bind together to clot the blood. People suffering from haemophilia produce less clotting factors. Suggest one symptom of this disease. The main symptom is that bleeding doesn't stop as the blood doesn't clot properly. You could also have suggested specific examples such as nosebleeds that don't stop, bleeding gums, bruising easily, internal bleeding, etc. All right, how did you do on the questions? Learn about the three types of blood vessels in my next video right here. And don't forget to subscribe. It really helps others see my videos and you'll get to access loads more too. Thanks for watching and bye.